So this was a patient who uh, presented to us with non-ST elevation MI and uh, as you can see that the patient has a diffuse lesion in the LED. Um, he's got a slow flow in the LED, the lesion is about 80% in the LED and uh, we decided to stent the patient. So here comes the dilemma. So here comes the dilemma. So we are not a very uh, big uh, believer in multiple stents, and we think that uh, the lesser the amount of metal in the body, the better it is. And if the work can be done with one, why take two? Because it will only add to the cost burden. And many studies have shown that an overlapping stent uh, versus a long stent that is more than 38 mm with a lesion of more than 38 mm, they have almost the same uh, result. Uh, and uh, some even prefer a long stent rather than two overlapping stent because of increased metal coverage uh, of the overlapping uh, segment. Uh, so here's the very tight lesion. The LED is diffused the disease up till here, and uh, so we wired the vessel. Uh, measuring is very important. So while uh, when doing the end, you know, we thought that uh, the LED would uh, require probably two stands, but uh, that is the beauty of measuring. And we thought that uh, I think we can do it in one long stand, so that would also decrease the cost to the patient and also has good effect so we decided to stand with one stent to decrease the cost to the patient and uh, here we are so that is the stent that you can see right here um, so that is the stent it's a long stent it's a 3.5 by uh, 44 millimeter stent and you can see that uh, it is almost covering it is actually covering all of the uh, lesion that we wanted to define or uh, the lesion that we wanted to cover and I think uh, you can appreciate the slow flow in the previous slide and yes so this is the stand being opened up yes. so the flow has immediately improved but uh, we always go for aggressive post dilatation so first we post dilate with the stent balloon only good flow has been achieved the tb2 flow has resolved to a tb3 flow so this is the i think uh, the most under expanded uh, segment and uh, we're post dilating it aggressively we're using a 3.5 mm by the 12 mm uh, balloon nc balloon and we're doing that for about uh, 20 to 30 seconds you see that uh, we've taken a stent boost here and uh, some under expanded segments here and there so we'll be post dilating it and uh, so we started a post dilatation so you might have noted that this is a femoral case uh, the femoral case uh, generally prefer a radial artery root uh, but uh, because the patient had uh, a very less uh, the radial artery was not very palpable and uh, the patient was quite elderly and um, the radials and the superficial even the superficial radial was not very uh, good and we did not want to compromise the ulnar artery so we uh, straight away went to the femoral in this case anyways so we are doing some aggressive post dilatation and you will see very good uh, result after the post dilatation uh, post dilating uh, always remember that post dilatation is a very crucial step uh, and uh, using stent boost or iverse is very uh, important a very good result here quite happy with the result patient had relief in the chest pain and uh, you can see that the most uh, what do you say 
the most uh, tight segment uh, right here is quite well uh, fully expanded and you can see that how beautifully that the LED has opened can you just see that uh, the stand has done wonders again if we check wonderful wonderful what we can see good stent expansion all throughout and this is the beauty of a good stent placement and using stent boost technology that you can really really appreciate the good things good stent expansion overall the, and uh, this is how a good result can be obtained. Thank you.